good evening everybody yeah. uh, we just finished the wonderful session and today we have with us dr ambarna gowda here welcome dr ambarna gowda to the metabolic health conference uh, good evening good evening uh, thank you thank you roshni thanks uh, for giving the opportunity and we are uh, Dr. Ambarna has, in fact, taken time out of his uh, family travel and uh, logged into this uh, session while on the road, uh, while traveling. Uh, to our viewers, I'd like to give a small uh, background, a brief background about Dr. Ambarna. He completed his uh, bachelor's from MR, uh, MC Gulbarga. He's done his post-graduation from B.R. Ambedkar College in Bengaluru. He holds a fellowship in diabetes from MB Diabetes Research Center, Chennai, and a PG diploma in diabetes from Cardiff, UK. Uh, Dr. Ambarna uh, is a firm believer in holistic diabetic care and is very well versed in aspects of diabetes management. Uh, he is an expert who most people reach out to, and he can be, uh, he, he works at Sparsh Hospital in Bengaluru. Uh, Dr. Ambarna, it's really a pleasure for me to host you in this uh, session. We have been interacting uh, on various uh, cases and uh, in the past. So please tell us a little more about yourself. Well, uh, family so professional I think we have some network issues since he's on the move. We'll be back shortly with uh, Dr. Ambarna. Yeah, I'm audible. Yes, Dr. Ambana, you can go ahead. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, once a month, I come down to my native to see a diabetic patient. So every Sunday, so after seeing the patient, I'm way back to Bangalore now. So this is how the thing are like, um, being seen, uh, engaging myself in various aspects of, you know, uh, places where, you, you know, you get different, everything so more of an interest as i went on uh, practicing everything more i am keen into preventive medicine wherein you know um creating awareness you know to know about the disease educating them and uh, they should also get involved you know to understand what they have it's not just taking medicine and uh, get back to life so things are going on that's what being i'm doing some uh research into diabetes uh, in various aspects, the new molecules which come across. Uh, and so far, so good. It's been going on. Uh, what led you to start exploring low carb diets? See, uh, that's what, as I told you, uh, lately, post COVID, everything, uh, we have been seeing patients, you know, uh, because I work in three different segments, everything, most of them, uh, are started on medicine already. Whether it is H1C 6.5, 6 or 7, 7.5, not considering the family history, age, anything. And what happened, what is happening is, you know, when they, uh, when their H1C returns to 5.5 and probably no proper guidance, protocol follow-up, they stop these medications. The patient is confused whether I'm diabetic or not. So these aspects we are seeing. So what I thought of is, you know, there's already a protocol, everything is there, but in place, why not bring in few things in our daily practice, you know, which is uh, in concurrent with the current practices, wherein, you know, 
uh, if there is no family list of risk factors, uh, hb one c is not too high, anything, start them off on the carbohydrate diet, everything, you know, to push them for seven, six months and see whether they are able to cope up and, uh, you know, uh, get adjusted to uh, a life, new lifestyle wherein, you know, they control their sugars uh, without any proper medications and uh, sustaining it for quite some time. That is the one thing. And lately, you know, being the Silicon City, there are many startups, you know, they are coming up with three months program, six months program, all these patients go there, attend and come back. Doctor, I am not able to sustain these healthy lifestyles, what they are telling me or the diet aspects. And uh, I, I have patients who came back to me and said, at least once a day pill, I am okay, but I can't follow these strict diets. Right. Active you know, they are spending roughly about, you know, 90,000 for three months. Imagine. And uh, they, they even afford most of the time for a CGM patch also. Mm -hmm. Where that's not necessary, it's not I mean, wise to use these things also. So considering all these things, you know, I thought of uh, uh, self-educating, learning myself. And, you know, because what we've taught in medical school is very different when we come into practice about that aspect. And very well as uh, Victor uh, Leslie, mm -hmm. listening to him, uh, there is always, you know, uh, the cat fight in the wards itself between the dietitian and ourselves. What we say, the patient is on the, uh, different uh, diet in the hospital. This I've uh, been facing is also. Then I'll speak about it. You know, coming a uh, few minutes about it, that also. So yeah. this all prompted me it, uh, to you know uh, educate myself and go ahead uh, and start this low carb diet and so far so good thing and a uh, few of the case studies seven patients are being happy so we'll see how it goes <laughs> so dr ampana if uh, i mean yes you you do advocate people to at least give it a try and that's how you uh, have uh, or worked with your patients uh, what are the potential risk factors or considerations that you actually discuss with your patients before they start or before they consider a low-carb diet? I believe we were again lost, uh, Dr. Ambana. We'll be back short. Yes. Yes, Dr. Amanna. Did you hear my question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> the concerns are uh, only, you know, of... Only, uh, for them who are already known diabetic and uh, when we counsel them and they are keen on to go to a low-carb diet. So, three aspects I look into because most of the time who is also known diabetic uncontrolled, most of the time they are in triple combination drug along with metformin, glimepride and e-carbose. So, if I am uh, educating them that, you know, you need to go to about low carb anything, one aspect I do is first thing is to take out that e-carbose because only thing that has been used for only for, you know, the carbohydrate per absorption per se, I mean the mechanism itself, everything. The second aspect would be uh, nowadays, I mean, most of them uh, comorbid conditions and even the second line of drug is started on SGLT2. So just making sure that, you know, educate them and tell them that, you know, they don't go into ketosis, everything. So second aspect is that. And Indian scenario, most of the patients I see already on around 2,000 to 2,500 grams of metformin. That's so right. when we put the low carb, everything, you know, sometimes they may have nausea, bloating or diarrhea. Uh, mm -hmm. We had patients, you know, uh, months together with diarrhea, but unexplained when you reduce your metformin and they're absolutely doing well. So such scenarios or the precautions I take about, I mean, uh, educating the patients who are already on uh, medications for diabetes. For uh, starters, everything, not uh, only hydration aspect, few things, you know, and uh, to monitor their sugars and be in touch with us regularly. You did cover up my next question as well, which was to ask on the Indian context. But uh, maybe you can touch upon what are the myths that you see people have uh, before going into low-carb diet? There is a lot of uh, stigma against it, especially in Bangalore. 
<laughs> so what are the myths that you most commonly encounter? Uh, see, basically, <laughs> the family doctor who is the one first thing is a bigger myth in the family where he says he has told me the diet or uh, my YouTuber had told me right, or my aunt, or my uncle, who is a non-diabetic for long years, there I've been following this diet. I'm happy with that. I'm following doc. I don't want to make any changes for that diet. This is the first thing we come across every time. So they say they don't blame it on the diet. So they in very uh, they tell about in uh, walking. There's been no exercise, but my diet has been perfectly good. So they don't want to accept that. The second aspect of this question, which I want to answer is now, I come from a hill from a place where, where rice bowl of Karnataka, you know? Yes. So three times a day, there is a consumption of rice. <laughs> and they grow their process, you know, uh, quantity wise, and they export everywhere. And this is one thing is, apart from rice topping, you tell me anything about. <laughs> it's, so these are the few concerns, you know, uh, acceptance isn't there and uh, they dodge wisely and they blame it on the exercise. And I think when we blame on exercise, then they go for a diet. Uh, probably I cheated for the last two weeks, so my sugar's high are high. And, you know, Can you also uh, share with us? Dr. Ambanar, that this is a common trend that we see, you know, they go on a low-carb diet, they perhaps fall off the wagon, you know, go on a high-carb diet for a few days, festival or something like that, and then come back. What is something that they need to be careful about when they're, you know, going into this yo-yo sort of low-carb, high-carb? What is something that, you know, people with metabolic syndrome need to be aware of? That is what when there is no consistent ending, they have poor condition and I think they will worsen. They will have a electrolyte imbalance. I think uh, we have lost Dr. Ambanna. We'll be back shortly. Yes, doctor. Dr. Ambanna, can you hear us now? You're on mute, Dr. Ambanna. Uh, Himanshu, I think he, uh, Dr. Ambanna needs yes. to be on mute. I have said yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Ambanna, you're still on mute. Uh, and Dr. Ambana, maybe to conserve the bandwidth, you could switch off your video if you're okay with that so that the conversation can go on. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Dr. Uh, the aspect is that's what uh, there is a gross variability of sugar then they can land up in diabetic ketoacidosis also. So we are more worried about that. They're not consistent. Uh, they can uh, <clears throat> trigger the complications by themselves, which they wouldn't be aware. And uh, at the end, you know, uh, there'll be no regular follow-up and they end up saying, uh, uh, or getting back to us saying that everything is all well. So these are the concerns. Uh, physician's perspective, diabetologist's perspective, that if there is, you know, no consistency, then it would be better of them not to push them and, you know, put not to the low carb diet. Okay. And what are the guidelines that you would want somebody to be aware of before they could even consider a low carb diet? So, uh, first, you know, uh, they need to educate themselves with help, our help, or, you know, there is lots of material available about, you know, and uh, make up their mind you know, first thing and uh, consistent regular follow-up would be ideal. And uh, for a period of <clears throat> time, if they're not consistent, you know, uh, the issues as we discussed will come up. So ideally, uh, these are the two things I would tell them 
when uh, initial discussion before induction and you know if they were inducing it to go slow initially and uh, as they progress in the two weeks four weeks process you know they can uh, <clears throat> really do well uh, Dr. Ambani, in your clinical practice, uh, where are the instances that you would want somebody to try the low-carb diet as a primary approach? Yeah, in fact, I've been uh, pursuing and started it in my clinical practice in the last four to six months, wherein, you know, uh, Hashimoto steroiditis, you know, typically who are not on, uh, along with PCOS, you know, who are not on medications already them and uh, gestational diabetes this is one thing i am looking at where you know with bit of diet change anything uh, we can stop them uh, to going on to insulin in gestational also in the initial first and second trimester so that thing i've been doing and been seeing a bit of response as well and uh, there are you know uh, in day to day practice uh, we give fitnesses for surgery perioperative there are also instances where you know we the uh, the patients you know get delayed for admission for surgery because that only thing is sugars are high. Yeah. In such scenarios also, uh, making sure that I educate them about uh, low carb diet, and uh, these are the few things you know apart from regular uh, you know uh, pre diabetes diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Now I see a lot of in health checks wherein you know they come with uh, ticking all the boxes of metabolic syndrome. And uh, right away, we don't put on medications. I tell them that come back three months, six months, but you need to be consistent with your diet and exercise and so that, you know, uh, you don't go on medications forever. That is one thing. Few of the important few things I'm looking at them and being a fair bit of success in them. Right. Can you share some of these success stories? Yeah, a, a couple of them one would be, I think, with uh, uh, Shashika and CEO. These guys are uh, elderly, middle aged male, a big hotelier. He is sleeping times are erratic. He, he sleeps at one o'clock. You know, these are things he was around 120 units of insulin uh, units per day. So over a period of time, you know, counseled him and the, none of the medications are working. He's going to severe insulin resistance and he has been doctor hopping, you know, this all things were happening. Then I said, counsel them, why don't you try this everything? Then I'll put across to you a certified metabolic coach wherein, you know, I'll be in touch also. And currently, so that, you know, I, he has no more attention. So uh, and, uh, I spoke with Shashikanji and put him across that and uh, and the... Uh, Results are like that. I mean, he has reduced 40 units in his daily uh, uh, intake of insulin. And for the last three months, he just messaged us saying that 175 milligram, the random, which is to be 250, 280 always. So that way he's happy and he's doing a fair bit of walking, exercise, everything. So uh, not completely on low carb, but acceptable for his, you know, waistline and for his... Uh, palatable thing, you know, he's uh, uh, following it. He's doing good. Then the second instance might be one uh, patient we both uh, I mean, have seen. Uh, she was uh, you know, very sugar gravy and she actually did well. We reduced the medicines, everything. Uh, to do other things. Everything ready did her sugar. She came down, everything. But consistency was not there and, you know, she fell off the this uh, low carb diet plan. There was a young chap also where you know by 18, 17 years old, and all the tests the history of this metabolic syndrome at the same age. Uh, so with low carb everything he did well and there were few initial uh, hesitancies for us, but uh, when they were seeing the result, I mean uh, they came up, they follow up everything and they are very happy with that. Uh, I think we have lost Dr. Ambarna again. We'll just uh, wait for him to rejoin. Yes, Dr. Ambarna, yeah. you can unmute. Perfect. Yeah. 
just to unmute so every time i have to wait for the unmute please yeah. go ahead <laughs> so uh, dr ambanand you know the low, anybody who wishes to follow low carb diet uh, requires uh, doctor support you know they, it's it's uh, it's better that it's always done under the supervision so if we have doctors also viewing into this session how do you how do you think they can support their patients better what is the practice that you have done to be able to support your patients better well that's a good question so initially uh by how i went about it is like we ourselves has to give more time during counseling you know five to seven minutes extra you know so that you know you counsel them for this aspect one thing is giving time to your patients other thing is educate yourself that educating myself learning and learning uh, apart from working for medical Uh, knowledge we have the other aspect is you know uh, providing them information also uh, you know just by uh, saying five to seven minutes spending in the uh, consultation room isn't ideal also the, that aspect also has to be covered and uh, making sure that you know the one thing i am uh, pushing them or counseling them is way you the doctor themselves you know can start not from word go small of induction into a day to day testing so uh, when we do it and we tell that we are doing it and the patients has more confidence in us and uh, the uh, acceptance is acceptance is higher i think we we'll just have to wait for uh, dr ambarna to rejoin yeah dr ambarna is here Are you able to hear us, doctor? Waiting for the unmute button from the host to come up. Sorry. So uh, these things and you know, educating and creating awareness is only from doctor side, which can be done well, so that it can be taken up for masses. So these are few pointers. You know, I would be recommending our your colleagues who be interested to uh, get this aspect into their practice. i really like the points you mentioned you know uh, because we work as a team and with the overwhelming numbers that we are seeing today uh, i think it's really important that we work as a team is there anything you'd like to tell the low carb community coaches uh, and practitioners well <laughs> uh, it's been a learning aspect for me i mean uh, uh, definitely uh, things are working out for my patients everything so one uh, thing i would love to uh, such a type of critic program such programs where you know uh, first mainly for the uh, health professional prof uh, community where you know uh, more awareness is created so that they start speaking about it and you know the word of mouth is the one which where which will help a, a lot and uh, definitely uh, from doctor fraternity they shouldn't be hesitant because you can't give more time to our patients all the time so taking a uh, uh, collective uh, from the registered metabolic coach as low carb specialist that should we should uh, inculcate accept in our practice you know we shouldn't hesitate uh, to put a cross patient to them so that you know uh, that I think we have lost uh, Dr. Ambarna. He'll be joining shortly. Yeah, he's back. So sorry, network is very bad. <laughs> no, no, no. no we should be thankful that you are able to take this time out during your travel itself, uh, Dr. Ambarna. Uh, thanks. Uh -huh. So, so these are the few things you know. Uh, more happier that to continue this trend and help my patients as well you know yes more happier about it. and uh, what would you like to leave our audience with what is some impact uh, that you would give from your end considering the fact that there's a lot of myths out there that uh, stay you know and strong statements especially we hear it in the local language in kannada 
which says that you know low carb diets are dangerous and bad and and not healthy and all of these what is the statement you'd like to give or make against these claims so, i would like to say you know uh, there is a lot of uh, misinformation doing around you know so for that we should come up and explain is the patients are or doctor colleagues themselves they have these questions i mean uh, raising doubts they should speak to us and we should start speaking to ourselves and first thing you know educate this is a thing these are the benefits i have seen case scenarios everything instead of speaking of going up putting up a, a, a aspect of drug everything even couple of case scenarios would very uh, encourage and uh, bring in uh, more information to is more so one thing would be you know go ahead uh, always get proper information before you know uh, accept anything from few videos or somebody who is not always being in touch with a registered uh, coach you know where you have doubt concern there is nothing wrong in from each other so i think uh, that you know uh, should help we should try to reach out more and learn and uh, relearn so that is one message i would like to i think we lost dr ambanna again yeah we have him back here yeah so yes. sorry sir for lots of uh, network issues <laughs> so at the end that is one thing i would like to say uh, more such uh, programs should be done and we should spend more time with our patients taking more time speaking or discussing only about these aspects rather than medications which you always we do right. that is one message i would like thank you so much dr ambanna and because we have less than 1 minute i'd like to invite shashikant here uh, and he would like to talk to you as well yeah dr ambarna thank you very much that in spite of this is a very busy sunday for you you have gone out of town to service a different village where you usually go once a month and still uh, in spite of all the difficulties you could join this session and uh, uh, we will have a very good session with you probably later on uninterrupted so that we all are able to listen to your views uninterrupted i think and still i wish to thank you very much for the session Poshni, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Shashi ji. And it's been a wonderful thing. And 